For our first paper, you'll be researching the context for one of the captivity narratives we're reading for the first unit of our course. The goal will be to learn more about what was happening in the colonies at the time the author was writing the text. We start by going to the university homepage at louisville.edu and clicking on the libraries link in the second column called Academics. Then click on Databases A to Z in the left column under Research Tools. Then we want Literature Online, so we're going to go to the L button in the alphabet up at the top and come down to Literature Online or Lion to get that database. Let's look at what we can find on Mary Rowlandson's captivity narrative. So well, let's type in Rowlandson on the quick search up at the top left. Wow, we get quite a bit. Let's see. The, I'm looking under the criticism about two-thirds of the way down the page. And I'm going to look there to see if there's anything that looks like it could be used for historical research or context. And I find this one by Nan Goodman, Money Answers All Things, Rethinking Economic and Cultural Exchange in the Captivity Narrative of Mary Rowlandson. That sounds like it could be very good context. So I'm going to click under Find It at U of L, right underneath the title. Ah. In the screen that pops up, it tells me that the full text may be available through ProQuest. So I'm going to click on the Go button. Ah, but no luck. No documents found. So I'm going to close that one and try the next one. Highwire Press, Oxford University. Let's try that one. Click on Go. Not found. All right. Full text may be available through Project Muse. I'm clicking on Go again. Ah, and this time here it is. So I can scroll down this to skim it. It's talking about exchange rates, um, the issue of exchange, commodities. At the time, the, it even says a captivity narrative like Rollins reveals a world in which the idea of cultural difference was in the process of being redefined. So this. Um, article really is talking about Rowlandson's text and the context, the times in which it was written. So this looks excellent. But we need more than one source. So I'm going to, um, I plan to use this one, but I'm going to go down and see what else I can find. All right, so now I'm back on the page with the Rowlandson results, and I come down under reference, and I see that there's a um, choice for a literature online biography. Let's see what they have to say about Mary Rowlandson herself. Oh my, a very nice, long, detailed biography on her. And uh, author biographies also often are very helpful in giving us information about the um, context in which an author was writing. So this looks like it might be very helpful. I'm going to go back and see what else was on that page. Okay, well, look at this. There's um, travel literature overview. There's prose novelistic forms. I don't really think of a captivity narrative as a travel narrative, but, you know, she does move around a lot through the colonies, um, so it might be very appropriate and find out what was, else was being written in that genre. And it's not a novel and yet she does use prose forms that might have a basis in, in the novel. So there might be interesting uh, things in this, at this uh, selection as well. And then I'll look up and see if there's anything else that looks interesting. There's some of her poetry, but I don't feel like that would be helpful for context, historical context. And so I think we're done with literature online. But that turned out to be very helpful. So, uh, but we have another source that we want to use uh, and check as well. So I'm going back to the U of L homepage, and I'm going back to libraries, and this time I'm going to click on the databases A to Z, and I'm going to go to E for Encyclopedia Americana, and go down and click on that. Now, Encyclopedia Americana is a college-level encyclopedia. Uh, that is provided specifically for all online classes. So it seems like it might be a very good source for us. 
I'm going to go up here and find it fast, and I'm going to put, I remember that the context of her captivity narr narrative is King Philip's War, so I'm going to type that in. Wow, 60,984 documents come up, a few more than I feel I need. So I'm going to think about how to uh, uh, pare this down a bit. I look over here on the left, and I see that there's actually four encyclopedias that are being, uh, being searched. I know that the Encyclopedia Americana is the college-level encyclopedia. Grow, grow your multimedia encyclopedia might be interesting, but in fact that one is... Uh, a, it, it's not, it's somewhat more simplistic of information, as is the new book of knowledge, which is really geared more almost to a middle school or high school audience. Amazing animals I don't know much about, but I'm not feeling like there'd be that much in there for us, for Mary Rowlandson. So I want just the Encyclopedia Americana entries. So I click on that. And now it you know, has helpfully brought us down to 29,000. Still more than we want, but let's just look at this first one. King Philip's War. Uh, that is what we want, so I'm going to click on that. And here it comes, a nice long article about the different native tribes that were fighting and, and uh, what was going on between Britain and the native peoples here in North America. So this looks like it would be a very helpful information. It, uh, let's see. So it seems that both Encyclopedia um, Americana and Literature Online will provide us good information. The assignment is to find at least four sources from these two databases for use in developing this paper. If you have any questions about the process and about research options, you can either email our embedded research librarian, Robert Detmering, at robert.detmering, D-E-T-M-E-R-I-N-G, at louisville.edu, or if you are on campus, you can stop at the research desk of Extreme Library for further help. And as always, you can contact me or ask questions on our course blog.